Hello class. In this video we're going to learn how to write unknown angle proofs. And before we go any further, I want to give you some historical perspective on proofs. Uh, you don't need to copy down any of that information from this slide, but I just want to give you a little bit of background. So we've already spoken about Euclid in class before. He's the ancient Greek who's considered the father of geometry. And in his book, The Elements, he lays out a whole lot of uh, different geometry uh, theorems. And for each theorem, he proves them using previously proved theorems or the axioms you see here. So everything, every property that we learn in this geometry course is actually derived from a combination of these five axioms. If you read through them, the first four seem pretty intuitive. Uh, the fifth one is something called the parallel postulate. And a logically equivalent version, meaning it's the exact same thing, just thinking about it differently, is if you have a straight line and a point that's not on it, you can only draw exactly one line that goes through that point parallel to the original line. And that might seem like something that should be provable. Well, mathematicians tried to prove it for hundreds of years, and it actually ended up that it was something that was impossible to prove. Uh, it actually gave rise to different uh, types of geometry that were studied. And so uh, the, in geometry, there are certain facts that we just take as true. In this case, it's going to be these five facts. Now, we're not going to actually use the facts, but I just want you to know that everything we learn comes from these five ideas or axioms. And in a similar fashion, when we do our proofs, we're going to start with previously known facts as well. So here we have an example of uh, an exterior angle of a triangle. And we already learned that its measure is going to be the sum of the measures of the two remote interior angles. So in this case, 78 degrees is equal to the measure of angle A plus 42 degrees. And so you solve for that unknown angle and you get 36 degrees. Well, what if we generalize it? We want to show that no matter which uh, possible angles you plug in for x, y, and z, that this will be true. And so we want to prove this statement I highlighted here, x plus y equals z, using this diagram. So I'm going to show you the basic way that you should always start a proof. We always want to end with what we're trying to prove. So in this case, we want to prove that the measure of angle x plus the measure of angle y is the measure of angle z. Now notice I used the measurement notation because these are the names of the angles here. There's no degree sign there. So x really isn't a variable in this case. It's just the name of that angle. And these three little dots there just mean therefore. You don't have to put that in your proof, but usually when we're at the end of a math proof, we say, therefore, this is true. So how do we get there? Well, you always end with what you're trying to show, and you always have to start off with facts that we know are true already. And it looks like we might want to add in another angle here because we have a triangle. So let's add in that third angle. Let's call it W. So what do we already know about the three interior angles of a triangle? we know that they sum to 180 degrees. And so to write that, the measure of angle X plus the measure of angle Y plus the measure of angle W is 180 degrees. OK, so we have this first equation. We want to get to the final one. The first one involves X, Y, and W. And the final one involves X, Y, and Z. So we need to get Z involved somehow. So what statement can we say about z here? Well, z and w form a linear pair, so they are supplementary. So their measures add up to 180 degrees. And now we have two equations, which are each equal to 180 degrees. So we can set them equal to each other. What do we call that property? Substitution. And then finally, how do we go from the third line to the fourth one? Well, we got to the measure of angle w on both sides, so we just subtract that from both sides. And that's how we prove the uh, property we know about exterior angles in the triangle. So if you notice, every step is either derived from a previous step or a previously known fact. So that's how we have to go through all of our proofs. And so here are some ideas that you can use throughout your proofs. The first three are properties of equality. Reflexive properties is very uh, important, and we use it a lot. 
basically just says something's equal to itself. Uh, we got the transitive property, symmetric property. Then we have all of the properties that we learned in algebra. So in addition to these properties, you could also have like the commutative property, distributive property, associative property. Uh, any of anything you learned in algebra is fair game. And so substitution, very important one. We use that a lot. And partition property, basically saying that you can cut something to pieces, and if you put all those pieces together, you get what you started with. So let's let's look at this one. I want you to try this on your own first. And I'll show you how I solved it. There's lots of ways to do this proof correctly. So the way I did it, I always start with what I want to prove. I want to prove that angle, or I'm sorry, I want to prove that line M is parallel to line M. And you should think of a strategy you want to use to show that. Well, we, we already learned about some angle pair relationships that show lines are parallel. We know that if alternate interior angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. And so we already have a 42 over here. I want to get another angle involved. The alternate interior one would be over here. I'm going to call that A. What can I say about angle A? Well, I know angle A and the angle that measures 138 degrees are a linear pair, so they're supplementary. So we know if we add those measures together, we get 180 degrees. So what's the measure of angle A? 42 degrees, and how did we get that? We subtracted 138 from both sides. And so now, why is M parallel to N? Because the alternate interior angles are congruent. So you don't have to be as wordy as we have it here. You could just say uh, alternate interior angles are congruent, so the lines are parallel. Uh, something along those lines. Here's another one. I want to prove that these three angles here, that their measures sum to 360 degrees. So before we start, we should really label what we're using here. So here is how I labeled it. OK, I called these angles uh, with the arrows on them, A, C, and E. And then their corresponding supplements, B, D, and F. And so try proof, and then I'll show you how I went through it. So first thing, let's end with what we want to prove. We want to prove that, now notice here, each of these symbols has a uh, degree, uh, the degrees on it. So in this case, these aren't referring to angle names. These are referring to numbers. So we don't need to use the measurement notation here. We can just say A plus C plus E equals 360, because they have the degree symbol. And let's see how we want to prove that. Well, what do we know about, let's say, angles A and B? Well, we know A and B adds up to 180, because they are linear pairs. They're a linear pair. Uh, what about C and D? Also 180. And E and F also gives you 180. So notice in our conclusion, we want to get A, C, and E all in the same equation. So how can we do that with the three equations that we already have? What should we do with them? Well, we're adding A, C, and E, so let's try adding our three equations together. And so you add all three of these together, and that's what you end up with. OK. Well, we want to get rid of the B, D, and F, because those aren't in our final statements. What do you notice about B, D, and F in the picture? Well, they're all interior angle measurements of this triangle, so you know that they add, to, they add up to 180. And so now, how can we get rid of B, D, and F here? You're going to subtract. Because when you subtract, the uh, those will cancel, the Ds will cancel, and the Fs will cancel. And then 540 minus 180 is 360. And finally, now we're going back to the uh, measure, using the measure of the angle notation, because these are names of angles. We want to prove uh, A 
measure of angle A plus the measure of angle D minus the measure of angle B is 180 degrees. So try that, and then we'll look at it together. So start at the end with your conclusion. Okay. Oh, and I, I should have said this earlier. I'm sorry. Um, we call this type of proof a two-column proof. We're going to learn under other types of proofs, but basically the left-hand side is all statements, and the right-hand side is all reasons for those statements. So that's why it's called a two-column proof. So you want to end with that. But what do we know that we can start with? Angle A, how is that related to the other angles? Well, these, this line on top and the line on the bottom are parallel. So we have alternate interior angles here. So A, measure of angle A, must be the same as the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle C. And how can we get D involved? We want to get D in our equation. Well, the only thing we know about D here, these lines are parallel. And we have D and C here on the same transversal. And are they supplementary or are they congruent? They're supplementary because they are same side interior angles. So you know that their measures add up to 180 degrees. And so this kind of looks like what we want to get. It has a D in it and it has 180. We just got want to get rid of that C. And so what we're going to do, the idea is you want to substitute for C. And back in algebra, remember we, we substituted in linear systems. Same idea. You want to solve this first equation for the measure of angle C. And then we're going to substitute that. So to get the measure of angle C by itself, you're going to subtract the measure of angle B from both sides. So this is what gives us this statement. And the reason is the subtraction property of equality. And so now we're going to substitute this whole thing. We're going to plug that in for the measure of angle C. And when we do that, that's our statement, and our reason is substitution. And how do we go from this fourth line to the fifth one? Well, all we did was switch the order here. That's the commutative property. Okay, so in this lesson, we learned how to write unknown angle proofs. Thank you for watching this video.